What's up, you guys? Did you miss us? We're back. It's episode 295 of Top Rope Nation. Ryan Drosty, joined by Justin Joint. Justin, it's been, I believe, three weeks since we've done a regular flagship because two weeks ago, I was really sick. I was coughing every 30 seconds. There was no way I could podcast. And then last week, we recorded a classic show for Patreon. So on the main feed, you got a sample of that, but a two and a half hour classic show yeah i was gonna say we we probably could have uh done one the following night but after two and a half hours i think we wiped out (laughs) i was thinking about it before we did classics but yeah we did this great look back on wrestle rock 86 with jesse velasquez good friend of the pod and so yeah yeah, it has been three weeks since we've done a regular flagship so we're gonna be catching up on current events talking everything going on this week and last in pro wrestling justin joint how are you doing tonight sir I'm um, not too bad. Um, I've got a friend of mine dealing with some mental health issues. So I just wanted to, you know, anybody out there who is suffering or needs help, you know, reach out for it. Don't don't be too ashamed or feel like it's a weakness to ask for help. Uh, go seek it out. Um, I, I'm, I'm sure there are loved ones in your life that want you around. So fight. Absolutely. Absolutely. Got anything in the glass tonight? Come on, man. <laughs> Little JMO. Little JMO. You know, when we were recording that Wrestle Rock show with Jesse, I said I had a Minnesota beer queued up since we we're talking about Minnesota pro wrestling. And then I never opened it that night. So I got it here. A good Surly Furious. Good I, actually, these beer. I actually picked up a six pack of Surly this week. Very I was jealous. Nice. Furious? Was it Furious or another yeah. one? Yep, nope, Very that nice. one, that same the one. The classic, all-time classic. You, so you like that better than Pseudo Sue? Um, you know what? I think I do. I think wow. as a go-to, I do. I mean, I, that's in my top three as yeah. just a regular go-to in the fridge. But Surly Furious was kind of like the first craft beer that really got me hooked on craft beers. I mean, I drank hmm. a few before then, but you used to only be able to get it in Minnesota. My wife's from Minnesota, so when we would go up there to see her family, I would stock up uncertainly furious so some of it's like sentimental to me now it's everywhere you know but yeah i love it i like the uh the bitterness to it for sure so um yeah a lot of wrestling to talk about justin maybe we'll be feeling bitter about pro wrestling maybe we're excited about pro wrestling we will see um before we get there though guys i did want to throw a shout out we got a new patron last week and i i shouted him out on the classic show but i said to on the main feed because that's part of the gig you join Patreon, you get the shout out on our main feed. Courtney Clark, thank you for joining the Top Rope Nation Patreon. I believe we're up to 48, so we're getting really close to 50. Uh, if you've been thinking about it, try us out for a month. Check out all the bonus content. We've got over 100 bonus shows in the Patreon archive. Some really good ones in recent months. And with summer coming here, I will have a lot more free time. I am planning on ramping up the Top Rope Nation extra shows as well which kyle was kind of previously handling i will be doing a lot of those this summer so just another reason to check out the top rope nation patreon feed patreon.com slash top rope nation check out the link in the broadcast description and we're streaming right now live on all the platforms so thank you everybody for tuning in right now i see we got good friend of the pod gabe benson in the chat we got david jenkinson he wanted to know if we've had zombie dust. Oh, yes. Three Floyds. Many mm-hmm. times. It's very similar to Pseudo Sue from Toppling Goliath, which is a which is an Iowa brewery that's all over the country. I actually think Pseudo Sue is a little bit better, but zombie dust is solid. I mean, what, they're, they're pretty close. What was the one that we had at uh, All Out Weekend uh, 21? It was, was like, it was like, yeah, it was, was it zombie, zombie dust? dust. Yeah, I thought, we were drinking. Wasn't there yeah. what, like a unicorns versus ninjas or something? That's another one. I think okay. they had zombie dust on tap at the venue, and we were drinking yeah. that at the show. And then we picked oh, up, yeah, that was uh, Pipeworks from Chicago, the can, can, ninja versus unicorn. That's a good IPA, too. Could you imagine drinking zombie dust while watching that all out 2021 show? That was Great a good time. night. That was a good Great night. Great time. Zombie dust is like in my top 10 of all time for craft beers for sure. So, you know what, Justin, speaking of drinking a little beer and saying cheers, I'm sure that's what's going on at AEW headquarters tonight. Maybe not beer, maybe 
something else. I don't know what they're what they're Get doing it. there. <laughs> but uh, AEW all in Wembley Stadium. The last couple of days, they've had the pre-show going for the or the pre-sale going for this. I should say the general on sale is Friday morning, so UK time, just a few hours from now. And as of Thursday afternoon, they have surpassed fifty thousand tickets sold just in the pre-sale for AEW all in at Wembley stadium in uh, a few months here. My God, uh, 50,000 sold. The gate so far is six and a half million dollars. Previously, the largest gate for uh, AEW was double or nothing last year in Vegas, $1.145 million. So they have <laughs> defeated that many times over already for all in. Um, and then you look at their next biggest, it was Dynamite Grand Slam, the first one back in 2021, $960,000. So they've only had one show surpass the million dollar gate. That was double or nothing, 2022. This one, six and a half million so far. Uh, it's going to be their biggest attendance number by far, too. Uh, at this point in time, their largest attendance was the first Grand Slam at Arthur Ashe Stadium in New York. 20,144. Well, like I said, they've, they've sold over 50,000 just in the pre sale. The on sale starts tomorrow for the general on sale. And then, you know, they're going to be selling tickets. Those are going to be trickling in all summer long, especially as the card gets announced as we get closer mm -hmm. and you know, some of the more fair weather fans who just maybe follow wrestling here and there. Or maybe, you know, you got a kid that's a wrestling fan. Maybe even if they predominantly watch WWE, when they hear there's going to be a big wrestling show. At Wembley Stadium, a bunch of people just out of curiosity are probably going to buy the cheap seats, too. So with all of that said, react, Justin. What are you thinking about these numbers? The thing that impresses me that you've kind of already alluded to is, you know, no matches uh, announced for this. And really, I mean, we don't even really have an idea of what they're going to throw out there. They, they haven't ramped up to this at all. So this is all based on the brand of mm -hmm. AEW. Um, and that says a lot, especially to all the haters out there and the WWE tribalists, like the ones who try to say that the, the maximum seating for this show is 40,000. And yet here we are at, you know, they're selling 50. Oh, yeah. I think Morons. when it was announced, I, I set the over under at 45. Remember that? I think we all took over. Yeah. Uh, but man, they've already hit that. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't remember if I said it on the show, but I, I thought if they could get to 50, you would have to call it just a resounding success and oh, they're yeah. blowing that out of the water. And, you know, God bless all you Europeans who are going to this show for one. I thank you. And two, I'm, I'm really jealous. <laughs> oh, I know this would be so much fun. I know a bunch of listeners of the show are headed there. Talk to Liam O'Rourke. He got his tickets. He's had nice. lots of people in our Facebook group talking about it i know there was some Ticketmaster mm -hmm. issues during the pre-sale go figure Ticketmaster blowing it but uh eventually people got through and uh maybe we'll see some top rope nation signs there maybe some t-shirts I mean, it's gonna be a big crowd but who knows yeah uh, I, it's, it's exciting to see how they're gonna set it up and obviously that could or do they have that cemented how they're they plan on where the stage will be and whatnot yeah, so you know, on the seating chart, it was really interesting. Maybe I can put this on the feed here in a second. Because um, I saw, I thought I saw one where it almost looked like the old MSG setup. Yes. Where like the entrance was like opposite side of camera. Yes. So I'm going to try to share my screen here. We can look at it. But it, it looks like, it looked to me the way they were shooting it was, yeah, in the opposite direction. Um yeah, yeah. So, okay, this is what I'm thinking. I'm losing my train of thought looking at this uh, seating chart. So, basically, if they put the hard cam where they normally do, they'll be shooting like the short side of the stadium, if you know what I'm saying. So, let me share this tab. We'll, we'll take a look at this here on the video feed. But they've got the entrance way on like the long side of the field. If you're listening on the podcast feed you might be very confused as to what the hell mm -hmm. i'm talking about right now but i'm bringing this up on the feed okay here it is on the video feed there we you go you see how like the entrance way is coming down from the long side of the stadium like if you were watching yeah. a soccer match it would be on the side like opposite the camera yeah so if they put the hard cam the way they normally do with the entrance way off to the side they would be shooting the shorter end of the stadium 
And I don't know. I mean, I don't know. They might shoot right at the entranceway, although I think that'd be kind of a weird look with a I stadium. Agree. I think it's it might just be, you know, just in case, you know, they only get I mean, this place can seat what, 80, 90,000. Mm-hmm. Let's say they sell 60,000, 65,000. If they shoot at the short way, it'll look more full. I mean, even with 50, you, you kind of want to shoot it where you get all the crowd in the background yeah. without any of the the entrance ramp taking up space. Mm-hmm. You want to make it look as grand and big as possible. Yeah. 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 I was talking actually with Liam about this the other day and, and we were talking about wondering how they would set up the camera here. But boy, I mean, I think at the top of the stadium, if you were in U.S. dollars, I think I looked up the conversion rate. Um the cheapest tickets are 30 pounds, which in US dollars is 37 bucks. So not, I mean, not too bad. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. What do you think? Where do you think they're going to come in at by the time they get to the show? Attendance wise, any predictions? Uh, boy, I think they got to switch it. If they, if they can get up to around 65, you know, maybe 70. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think you want to do that entrance. I I think 65 70 I'm pretty confident right now. If they've started yeah. sold 50 in the pre-sale and you know you got to get that password or register or whatever you had to do to do it and then you think about just the general public for the next couple of months sales trickling in especially once the cards announced they're definitely that, getting over 60. Yeah, for that's sure. the big that's the big thing is when we start getting an idea of what this card looks like and if um I mean we'll probably get into it later but you know we've kind of in the middle of a lackadaisical double or nothing build Mm -hmm. but i think once we get past that and punk returns and that excitement starts to build i I think you're going to have another rush for tickets and i honestly i think the thing i've been seeing online that's holding a lot of people back is apparently the hotel options aren't Mm -hmm. all that great in the area okay and i'm sure the ones that they have are jacked up oh yeah. yeah yeah Yeah, I think we're in for a pretty fun summer in wrestling, yeah. especially AEW side. And things are going to get hot over the summer, and there's going to be a lot of excitement by the time you get there. Um, if you are wondering like where this compares to, say, Clash at the Castle, WWE show there in uh, the UK last fall, well, as of right now, as just the pre-sale... This is the third biggest wrestling show ever in the UK. The only shows ahead of it, like gate-wise and attendance-wise, would be Clash at the Castle and SummerSlam 92. Now, Clash at the Castle did an $8 million gate, but like I told you, AEW's at $6.5 million right now, and it's just pre-sale so far. Mm-hmm. Um, Clash at the Castle did 62,296 fans. And AEW is at 50,000 right now in the pre sale. So, and of that, by the way, of the 62,000 fans for Clash of the Castle, it was 49,000 paid. So, wow. AEW has actually sold more tickets than Clash of the Castle already as of How right now. How incredible is that? Like less than one year later, and AEW is doing that, doing something that WWE couldn't do. Right. And they didn't sell out that stadium. Sellout mm. would have been about 71 and a half, 71,500 fans. WWE ran into some issues with it where the tickets were priced pretty high. And at the last minute, they cut some of the ticket prices, but not everyone heard about it. So they didn't quite fill it up. I mean, it was a resounding success. Don't get me mm-hmm. wrong. But this show, I mean, it's already surpassed the amount sold. The gate isn't as high yet because the tickets are cheaper. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you, you know, SummerSlam 92, they announced that I believe on pay-per-view as like an 82,000 fan night, uh, for attendance, but the real number is probably around 78, 79,000 for SummerSlam 92. In fact, I think, I think the number I have is 78, 927. So, I mean, they'd have to sell 30,000 more tickets to break that all time attendance record. I'm not going to say impossible, but it I mean, <laughs> doesn't seem likely. That's a lot of yeah. tickets, and, but who knows what kind of interest you're going to have over the summer. But it is, it's going to surpass Clash of the Castle. I think you know, the gate, they might get close to that gate, right? Surpass the gate. They've already sold more tickets. So some of these WWE tribalists, Justin, are so weird. weird. I yeah, see some I of these responses in these Facebook posts that get recommended to me that I just hate reading because I don't want to join those groups. 
but there'll be people in there like, oh, WWE could have done that, or oh, WWE would have already sold it out, or no, they wouldn't have. I just well, told you, and, we've already sold more tickets for AEW. AEW's already sold more tickets, but and and well, and now you have people saying that Tony Khan is the one who's bought up most of these tickets. <laughs> these people are so weird, so weird. Uh, you know, don't you want to just root for everybody? Like I was pumped yeah. about Clash of the Castle. We were yeah. very complimentary about that show. It looked great on TV. But you want two promotions drawing these kinds of numbers because it helps out the talent. They get paid mm-hmm. better. Wrestling's more exciting. Talk about this ad nauseum over the years. This is what you want. And this is a bigger crowd than WCW ever drew already right that now. Is, that's incredible. I mean, yeah. part part of that has got to be because they never tried for something like this. I mean, you have to have thought that somewhere in 97, they could have done something like this, but they never and of really course, tried I'm not talking about like interpromotional shows, like the new Japan shows over yeah. Korea, but like, yeah, yeah a singular, a straight up, yep. yeah, straight up WCW show. Yeah. So that is incredible. We're talking about a company that's what four years old, mm-hmm. <laughs> almost exactly double or nothing. 2019, not even four years old at this moment in time. And to draw over 50,000 sold for a show with zero matches in a stadium like Wembley Stadium is pretty incredible. So you got to you got to hand it to AEW at this point. And and not just a dump on WWE, but it does show the 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 thirst that people had for the alternative. Mm -hmm. You know, they they desperately needed that. Um, You know, me, I'm I'm included in that. Uh, I, I wish WWE was currently something I would was more into but i'm just not and without aw i i don't know what my wrestling fandom would look like right now so i i'd love to see the uh, uh this going so well for them i love just to have the option yeah to bounce back and forth if i'm not digging wwe right now i can flip on aw and just only tune into that weekly you know not on the same night but uh, i watch a lot of my wrestling on dvr these days with three kids so same if i'm gonna if i'm gonna click on the dvr if i'm not digging wwe i'm not gonna watch it you know i'll I'll read the results but i have another option and i can keep watching pro wrestling and i just totally tune out which would have been the case 10 15 years ago so yeah huge success with all in we'll keep tabs on those ticket sales as we go justin you mentioned cm punk the pending return. It's as we've been talking about on the pod, Andrew Zarian, our friend from Matt men, he reported this weeks ago, uh, a W collision new Saturday night show going to be on TNT right now. Uh, they haven't officially announced it yet, but the plan is United center Chicago, June 17th with punk returning. This will probably be announced at the upfronts for television with where TNT and Turner and Warner will be there on may 17th and i'll give them like a month to sell the show um i know Meltzer reported that not only would punk be there but also another big return or debut would probably be planned for running such a big arena like the united center and then four days after that they're gonna have dynamite at wind trust also in chicago i will be at that show going to it with friend of the pod tim jensen looking forward to that so they've got a big June ahead of them. We got CM Punk working his way back into the fold. And I thought we'd just take a look at CM Punk's world travels, Justin. He's been all over the place over the last several weeks, couple of months. And really, I think it all started. If you go look at the timeline, Punk attended the New Japan show out in California to see Mercedes Monet, Sasha Banks, work on February 18th. He was there with Lars Fredrickson of Rancid, big wrestling fan. He has a wrestling podcast as well. Oh, I didn't Uh, know that. Yeah. And so, yeah, Punk was his guest out there. You know, there was no issues. He came to see a friend wrestle. And then in the last couple of weeks, lots of movement from Punk around the wrestling world. So apparently, we've been talking about there was going to be this meeting where some of the issues are going to be ironed out and that there was going to be something with Jericho that they've been trying to meet have Punk and the Elite guys all sit down. That has not yet happened as far as I'm aware, but Punk did sit down with Jericho, and they had a meeting on April 21st, which is a Friday a couple of weeks ago. Apparently, the meeting was pretty unremarkable, but no arguing, nothing negative came out of that. And so, as of now, it looks like Jericho and Punk could work together, which is the plan, is when Punk comes back, Jericho is going to be his main foil on the Saturday night show as of right now so yeah go ahead i i just hate the idea of this 
soft brand split within yeah. a w i just hate it so much unless they're using it to tell the story to lead in to all in it just it's going to be so distracting as i've said before it's it's going to be the elephant on the show mm -hmm. every single week uh, until they get this thing figured out uh i, I know they have a deep roster uh, but you go through feuds really quick and things start getting repetitive and things start feeling stale i mean that's we'll get into it later but you know i'm looking at the these new raw and smackdown rosters and i, I just see more of the same shit i don't really see any fresh or exciting mash matchups yeah yeah it's gonna be odd you know if it does end up being june 17th and they're at the united center and then the 21st for dynamite a few days later at wind trust because if they're only going to have punk on the saturday show don't you have to have him at that dynamite that's still in Chicago just a few days later. It'd be a lot of chance. I mean, selfishly, I'm hoping he's going to be there because I'm going to be mm. at Dynamite. But it feels like even if they are going to keep him separate, especially like for touring reasons when they're not in the same town, but like here they're in the same town, different venues. It feels like, boy, when he first comes back, you do got to get him on your A show. And I know, I know that they want this collision show to not be seen as a B show. But look, it's on Saturday nights. It's not in a great yeah. time slot. Punk's your biggest star. He's the biggest mainstream star in the company, no doubt about it. You can't never have him on Wednesday nights, right? Especially when it's in his hometown. I guess I, I, there's got to be some sort of way where if there, I mean, if it is so toxic that you can't have Punk and the Young Bucks in the same arena, which I think is the case because my gut tells me Omega is probably fine with it mm -hmm. or he'd be willing to move on. Then you have to flip flop them on these shows. You know, maybe punk is on both one week and then takes a week off. And then, you know, just, he can't just be on the Saturday show. If, if they really will not be in the same arena together, you got to leave the bucks home that week. <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, how many times have the Young Bucks worked Chicago in the last few years, and how many times has CM Punk? I mean, Punk's a few times, but not not as many times as the Bucks. And like that crowd's gonna want to see Punk if he was at the Saturday show just a few days earlier. You got. By the way, I, on the show. I forgot. Why can't you go to the Saturday one? Oh, Ryan Huffman's wedding. Friend of the oh. pod. He's been on the. Well, he's been on the pod a few times. I mean, there is. Look, I love pro wrestling. I'd love to be there for CM Punk's return. I am not missing one of my good buddies' weddings for it. <laughs> Ryan Huffman comes first. So I, I never thought about going to that. But the Dynamite at Wintrust, when they announced that, I was like, man, I kind of want to go to that because it's summertime. I'll be off work. Uh, I love the Wintrust Arena. I went to Revolution there. It's a great venue. Summertime in Chicago. You know, can actually do some stuff downtown because Wintrust is right downtown. It's not way out in the suburbs like where they've been having uh, the Now Arena, you know, all out the last couple of years so it'll have, be a fun time have they announced all outs location yet they have not publicly announced it but everything i've heard is it's it's they were they were working on united center i know that okay. um i don't know if this saturday situation will change that or not but i know that chicago in general was the plan still as of a week ago that was right. still the plan even well, we, they're gonna we run got, it a we week got, we after that, all in right oh yeah yeah okay for sure no question. Yeah, if you guys are thinking about going to all out Chicagoland, which is still planned as I understand. I mean, it is possible they could call it off, but as I understand, that's still going to be a week after the Wembley show. That's we'll nuts. be there. So, <laughs> join us. We will be there for sure. Two massive shows. I have you seen the talk about the broadcast for Wembley right now? Now people are thinking maybe Max, it's going to be on Max, which we speculated about. Yeah, that's yeah. what I just saw tonight. Somebody mm -hmm. was talking about that. That'd be pretty sweet. Yeah, maybe they'll announce that at the upfronts. I don't know, but that is kind of what we said when it was first announced that mm -hmm. it was probably going to be on the streaming service. So they they just got to make damn sure they have all the kinks worked out. Yes. You don't want angry wrestling fans, you guys. No, you do not. <laughs> angry nerds Cause, coming after you. Because we'll get angry about <laughs> anything, even shirts. That's right. That's right. Black guys. Anything. <laughs> Blood? Nah, blood's no problem. Just the black guys. 
Uh, okay, so Jericho and Punk, April 21st. That was a Friday. Then, I uh, believe that was in Florida that they met. Punk flies back to Chicago, and there were some interactions with WWE people as he was flying back. He goes to Raw at Allstate Arena in Chicago on April 24th. That was the one that stunned everybody. Apparently, talked to the Miz backstage. They ironed out their differences. Talked to Hunter backstage. Apparently, it was smooth. Nothing happened there. Vince made the call virtually from my, many miles away that Punk had to leave, so he left. Um, there was a picture of him in the parking lot talking to Tamina, I believe it was. and uh, But yeah, no incident. And then... Last Saturday night, I believe it was, he was at the Impact Wrestling tapings in Chicago at Cicero Stadium. So Punk has been at Impact, WWE, and New Japan over the last couple of months. WWE and Impact within five days of each other. So everyone's wondering, what's going on? Why is he all of a sudden going to all these different companies? What's your theory on it, Justin? Why do you think he's doing this? Um... Well, first off, I, I am starting to get a little bit of punk fatigue. Just all just the rumors. Of the news. Yeah, yeah, it's just endless rumors of what's going on. But having said that, I think the WWE one is interesting. And it really makes me think that he must like maybe be in therapy or something. Like maybe the, the brawl out was kind of a light bulb moment for him that, you know, he, he gave hangman all this shit about possibly ruining you know a million dollar gate at double or nothing and, and then what does he go and do he he ruins you know multiple possible million dollar gates so i'm wondering if maybe that was a wake-up call and he's in therapy and this and this is all just uh, yeah you know, conjecture yeah, yeah speculation mm -hmm. um so maybe he's you know he's just going down that road of like healing old wounds and part of that was going back to wwe that's really the only thing i can think of because all the other reasons feel kind of nefarious <laughs> so i i didn't think like the therapy route but kind of like the same motivations that was kind of my thought about it too because some people were online like really oh what's he doing here you know because we know what punk's reputation is is he trying to cause issues you know like What's the ult what what is the ultimate uh, motive he has here? Mm -hmm. But I kind of saw it as like this tour of all these places where he can show that he can get along with anybody. He's getting his name out there, of course, uh, drumming up you know some momentum for his return. I'm sure that plays into it a little bit. But you know, if the if the Bucks will not even meet with him. He's showing, look at this, I'm talking to the Miz, I'm, I'm talking yeah. to Hunter Hearst Helms, you guys can't even meet with me. I, I, I feel like that could be part of the play too, but and, I think I not just like in a, a manipulative way, but he wants to show that he's not this bad apple. I mean, look, what did we talk about right after this happened? I remember coming on the show and I was like, this guy cannot possibly want to go out like this after mm -hmm. this fight. With that press conference, this guy who's a legend in pro wrestling, how on earth could you want to go out like that? And maybe, like you're saying, the light bulb went off and he's trying to heal all those old wounds, much in the same way, not in, you know, Brett didn't cause a lot of issue, but when, you know, Brett's his favorite wrestler along with Steve Austin and uh, for Punk, Brett and Steve are like 1A and 1B from what I understand for Punk. And he saw Bret Hart go back to WWE and hug Shawn Michaels, you know, make amends with Vince McMahon. Of all people, Bret Hart. So, you know, maybe he's got that in the back of his mind, too. But I think that he just, yeah, after a crazy last year, I think he maybe just, honest to God, wants to make things right across the board. So to maybe squa help me maybe squash some rumors here, it, it does truly seem like coming back to AEW really reignited his love for professional wrestling and and he really seems to want to come back because of the fans to, to you know mm -hmm. to perform in front of the fans again and a lot of people were saying well it looks like you know if he's not going to be allowed back you know in a kind of a, a full-time capacity to AEW is he is he putting out feelers to WWE mm -hmm. to see if he could work there um so I'm, did it ever come out how long of a contract he signed with AEW 
because I, I thought it was three years, which would put which would put that at the like the fall of twenty four. And then I don't know if if they do the same thing as WWE where they can extend that due to injury, which would push that into like twenty five. I never heard for sure. I think I heard three and I heard four from somebody else, and nobody could tell me for sure. But it was for sure multi year and more than two. Um, I know people couldn't comment on it because of the legal situation after brawl out and everything. I know there's a buyout clause in the contract. So, you know, for a while they were saying he wanted to have it get bought out so he could try something else. Um, yeah, I, th- I think three to four, it's probably three or four for sure. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a very high dollar amount. I know that, but yeah, we never, I don't think we ever got for sure word on how long it is. The yeah, only just, way I, he could go there right now is if it got bought out. Yeah. And I, I just brought that up just to kind of show that it'd be weird for him to put out feelers now when he's trying to get back in with AW when I mean, or since Tony Khan didn't buy out his contract that, mm-hmm. you know, the like I said, the earliest he could be looking at jumping in WWE would be for more than another year. Yeah. It'd be like August of 24. Would be so that, yeah, the earliest. That that's what makes me think it, it was more of a, a healing tour for him to go back there. Mm-hmm. And I still, I mean, would he go back there? Probably. But I still feel a hundred percent like he'd rather work AEW. Way more freedom. I'm sure some of those issues he had with WWE are still going to be issues. I think at the top of his list is always AEW. But if it won't work out there and he wants to wrestle, I could see it. You know, I could see him go to New Japan. It was kind of cool that he went to Impact. I don't think he's going to go to Impact. <laughs> um, nor should he. Nothing against Impact, but like just star power wise, it wouldn't make a lot of sense for the, like the kind of money he can draw. So, yeah, we, we got a question about Punk and the WWE return uh, in our thread on Facebook. We're going to do a Q&A here at the end of the broadcast. So we can bring this topic back up then. But. Yeah, I mean, I I was kind of on, as you said, like the healing tour thing with also Elise Mending Fest is just down the line. Maybe Mm -hmm. an opportunity opens. Not that he wants to go there right now, but keeping your options open. So it's really all we know about Punk right now. We're waiting for May 17th and the upfronts and the new show to be announced. And then they'll start building towards that. And we'll see what happens. And we'll be right here with you to talk about it in the weeks ahead. Uh, Justin, real quickly, Dynamite last night, and then we're going to hit some WWE stuff. Um, the show was very much praised. Uh, I know viewership was down. I think they were number eight on cable, high 700,000s in viewership, uh, which is, you know, another thing why Punk's return could help them out for mm-hmm. sure. Um, there's also been a lot of stiff competition from in the sports world lately, so that's hurting them as well. But uh, mostly positive reviews of the show last night across huh. the board. Uh, we have our first officially announced match for Double or Nothing, which is just you know weeks away now. Your thoughts on last night's show? I'm shocked to hear that it was kind of highly regarded because I was kind of bored during it. I I didn't I, w- I wouldn't say I didn't enjoy it, but for me it, it was uh, definitely a below average dynamite. The the praise I kept seeing on my timeline on Twitter. Twitter is a whole nother topic, by the way. <laughs> I did get that blue sky recently, and I got to tell you, I like blue sky a hell of a lot more. Just need Twitter. to get everybody over there. And I got followed back today, Justin, on blue sky by my favorite historian. So now I have, other than wrestling, nice. no reason to turn on Twitter. But I still check Twitter for the wrestling takes because blue sky, there's just not a lot of people on there yet. It's like invite only right now. Um, and on Twitter, the people were saying it felt and it kind of has felt a little bit more like uh, old school AEW, like they went back to the all black ropes, you know, recently I like people that. Are, are fans of that. I wish they'd bring back the old entranceway. I'm sorry. I just do not hmm. like the look of this new entranceway. It looks too much like WWE. Ironically, it was an ex WWE guy they brought in who made all the changes. And like, hmm. I, I think the old dynamite set was way more unique. I don't know if this is a hot take or a lot of people agree with me. Let me know. But I just do not like that new set. I am glad they went back to the black ring ropes. I liked the first week, like the throwback with, you know, old WWF rings and everything. But it's like, nah, they they should have the all black. You a fan of that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely prefer the all black. And I, I 
I definitely like the old stage better, but I'm okay with them switching it up for a while just to freshen things up. The thing I don't like is the change from not talking about the ropes, but the, the kind of the theme of the show where it used to be kind of like multicolored, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, whereas now it's more just red, white, and blue. And that's just a little bland and more like neon lights. Yeah. 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 It almost um, not not cartoony is not like the right word for it, but I don't know how to describe. It, I, I, it, I agree. it I does know. feel a little WWE, but it does. It does. I, I I don't mind it right now. At least they're not putting up, you know, giant ugly cartoon computer graphics for every entrance. <laughs> yeah. So people were fans of, of the look recently of going back to the black ring roast, but also just they felt like it was booked more like old AEW and not so much like WWE light. That was like the take I kept getting. I was kind of with you. I didn't particularly like the battle Royal. Um, the eight man tag was like, okay, but I wasn't mm-hmm. super into it. Um, I did like the Starks and Robinson match. Um, I liked what they did with Hikaru Shida. And yeah, I mean, Oh, we talked about this before. The four pillars thing. I thought that the promos were pretty entertaining. We all knew where this was going, though. So I wasn't that into the main event. You know, shock. They're doing the four way, you know. And although they've done an okay job in building it, it still does not feel like a world title match to me. It just doesn't. You know, like when when MJF told Jungle Boy, we all know that you're not world champion material. It's true. Yeah. (laughs) Like, at least right now, it is true. And Mm -hmm. that's a problem because it doesn't feel like he should be in the main event in Las Vegas right now. Uh, Darby. Now, Darby's like been weakened a lot the last couple of years. Darby could main event, although, you know, they're building him back up. Sammy shouldn't be in the main event of a pay-per-view in Las Vegas. It, it, It just does not feel like a world title match to me. Yeah, this is one of those things, and I think I, I I stayed on board with this for a little bit longer than other people, but they've really lost me these last few weeks uh, because initially I, I liked the idea of you know a four pillars four way match um, if you didn't really have anything better lined up, and maybe you know as we've been talking about, they're holding off on bigger matchups for the summer because they've got a lot yeah. of big shows coming up, and oh I don't know which. Just mentioned the Owen Hart tournament. That was kind of cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. A lot of it going to be taking place in Canada. That, I love that idea. Culminating um, in Calgary, right? Which I believe is going to be the Saturday night show. Because that was originally announced as a house show. But they're running the Saddle Dome. Mm. Big arena. And so I believe that's where it's supposed to conclude. Just off of memory. But back to the four pillars. Uh, to your point, the big problem with this is that it's put a giant spotlight on the fact that MJF is a top guy now. I I, I think he's a cemented main eventer. Mm -hmm. And then there's a huge gap. And then there's Darby, who who I think is a borderline main eventer. I I I, you know I he has grown on me by leaps and bounds since the the start of AEW. I I loved his little mini feud with Samoa Joe earlier Mm -hmm. this year. And then there's a giant gap again where, you know, I guess maybe you could put both Sammy and Jungle Boy in there. But to me, I, I, I'd probably go Sammy. And then there's another little gap and then Jungle Boy. Cause mm-hmm. man, though, I think Sammy's been a lot better in this feud than Jungle Boy. J- Jungle Boy is just, he's, he's out of his realm in this. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we all loved, I think, you know, the tag team with Luchasaurus and we were all waiting with bated breath for the the Christian feud, which I enjoyed their match. But gosh, he he might just be like a, a, a top level tag team guy because yeah. I, I, I just I there's just no way any of these guys are winning the title, which is OK. But th- you should have maybe a tiny bit of a question in your mind. I mean, you know, I, I don't doubt they're going to deliver match wise. I'm sure the match, oh, will yeah. be fan- the match is going to be fantastic, but 
uh, this is not exactly what you want from the guys that you call your four pillars because it's really like one, maybe two. Because you can't possibly buy any of them winning, like not even for a second. They they would have been better off just building Darby this entire time. Yes, I agree. Hundred percent agree. Maybe if they built it just right, maybe you could think they do like a shock title change. But as is, especially with the summer that's planned, there's no way they're going away from MJF. Yeah. And so, like, you know, we talk about this WWE, so we got to be fair. Is the match going to deliver in the ring? Yes. Do I care about this story? Not really, because there's no question about the result. And so, like, they can't really. I just can't get excited about this match at all. Don't get me wrong. I wish we were going to Las Vegas again. Mm-hmm. I was thinking about that today. We had such a blast out there last year. But just this show feels like such a stopgap show before the big stuff really begins. And that's and unfortunate because they're running a big building in a major market where they've had so many memorable things happen. Mm-hmm. The first show ever in company history in Vegas out there at the uh, MGM. And this match, this the show just doesn't feel exciting right now. Yeah, and... In, in- and it's hurt by, in my eyes, kind of a lackluster, just something feels off in the Adam Cole and Chris Jericho feud. They, it feels like there's maybe a little bit too much with the theatrics. Yeah. Um, and really, for me, right now, with uh, AEW television, the, the most interesting thing by far is the, the Blackpool Combat Club and, and mm-hmm. their feud with the Elite. And even then, I, I I don't think the elite are, are quite on, you know, the BCC's level. Even though Brian Danielson bashed Bret Hart, Justin? <laughs> I, I I enjoyed that because I know what he's <laughs> yeah. trying to do. Yeah, it was funny. It was funny. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I think there's a lot of issues going into Double or Nothing right now. And it's just like we're talking about this other stuff that is so exciting. And it's been hard to get into this show. And then right after that, we're going to have the joint show forbidden door in Toronto. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure that'll be a hell of a show just like last year's was. So this one is just kind of there right now. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's, there's just rare. so much more exciting stuff. We're all looking forward to. So, and, and I mean, we don't really have an idea of what this card is going to look like yet. Double or well, nothing. We, that is, we do know that Jeff Jarrett and Jay lethal have challenged FTR for a tag title <sighs> match and I'll say the segment at the Briscoe Farm was very entertaining, but I have zero interest in FTR wrestling those two on a pay-per-view in the title match, Justin. Ryan, we've been friends for a long time, right? You, yeah, you know me pretty you know years. me pretty well. Yeah, you yeah. know me pretty well, especially when it comes to wrestling. I have an admission. Uh-oh. I'm kind of digging this Jeff Jarrett AEW run. <laughs> I have warmed up to it a little bit. As Greg says in our chat, Jeff Jarrett, go away. I've warmed up to it a little. I think they've used him pretty well. But, I mean, on a pay-per-view, like, it's fine as a TV match. See, I, I don't mind it. He is, like, literally one of my least favorite professional wrestlers of all time. I have, I hated him in WWF. I, I hated him in WCW. But I think he's, he's he's kind of stripped it all down. I like just the the all black, the last outlaw look. Uh, I, I think he's playing his role perfectly in the mid card. He's not wearing you know ugly, goofy glasses to try and I, I don't I don't know what that was he was doing in Shawn WCW. Michael's light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, all that stuff was so obnoxious to me. Where I, I don't mind this you know, last ride cowboy version of them. Uh, and I don't mind that, you know, he's going to be in a pay-per-view for the tag title. Oh, I mean, they don't have, they don't, just... they don't, they don't really have anybody else. That's the problem. It, and, yeah. and I, I think they're building it well, including uh, uh, Briscoe in this. So I, I just, it doesn't bother me. And, it, and it, it does help that it's been some of the more entertaining stuff on the show. Mm-hmm. You're just chomping at the bit for him to sing with my baby tonight. You're just waiting. Oh, no, see, that, that, at it. that's the stuff I fucking hate. I, I'm okay <laughs> with the Jeff Jarrett yeah. we're getting right now. And this yeah. is coming from somebody who's a huge Dax fan who just yeah. saw Jeff Jarrett beat Dax Harwood a week ago. And <laughs> I really don't mind it. I, he's just, he's playing the old, old timey heel really well. 
in, if, in, yeah, in, if you it's can do not the like, tag title match, it makes sense. You had to have him win that match. Yeah. And, and, and we know he's not like going to be around for a long time. He's not going to yeah. be in the main event scene. And that was always, that was the other reason why I always hated him is because he never felt like a main eventer. And yet he was always somehow getting himself into that scene. You better hope he's not around for a long time, Justin. Or in two years, I'm going to be playing this clip <laughs> in our intro as Jeff Jarrett main events all out 2025 against Kenny Omega. Uh, I'll be wearing my black hat and <laughs> black jacket. I, I got to tell you something, Ryan. I've just I've turned a corner with this Jeff Jarrett. <laughs> Finally, I get it. Main double, event. Here we go. Double J Justin Joint happens to love Double J Jeff Jarrett. You're going to be like, reunite the silver and black NWO slap nuts. Oh, God, no. No. <laughs> Once again, that's the kind of shit I hate. Yes. No, yeah. thank you. So that that's going to be a double or nothing. And so the, yeah, the Briscoe's Farm thing led up to that. But otherwise, uh, I mean, anything else? I Like I said, I like the Sheeta tease and then mm-hmm. the turn. I thought that was, I mean, it was like an old school Nitro moment, basically like an NWO type thing. That's what it felt like. You So do you think that's going to be like a... Okay, here are my two questions. Mm -hmm. Uh, Do you think we're looking at like a six women tag match with all the outcasts versus, you know, the homegrowns? And would that be an anarchy in the arena? Or do you think they're going to do anarchy Mm -hmm. in the arena with uh, Blackpool Combat Club in Elite? Or is that going to be blood and guts? Or I I can't imagine them doing both on the same show. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I'm just I'm curious how you think that's going to end up. Boy, yeah, that would be kind of intriguing to do the women's match. I mean, all over the arena. That match last year was awesome, by the way, live. Um, I oh, would. It's amazing. You know, I'd kind of like to see some new people on that, to be honest with you. I mean, we had some of the same people. I'd, I'd love Blood and Guts with Blackpool Combat Club. Yeah. And the elite. I think that'd be awesome. I'd I think I'd rather see them do that match personally. Than than anarchy in the arena. Yeah. Yeah. You? Uh same. I agree. All there is part of me that likes the idea of establishing anarchy in the arena as your special double or nothing match. Although that is a trope that we strongly dislike about WWE. Yeah. And they kind of gotta rescue this. Uh, blood and guts thing right i mean they've had the ones in the past haven't been overly great you know we Mm -mm. raged about how they shot the the finishing thing through the the crash pad and they still gotta have like that all-time classic blood and guts match those guys could certainly do it the the last one wasn't too bad the problem is they just go too long yes you know the, the all of the ones that we love are right around 20 minutes and it's because all the action that leads up to the match beyond matters Mm -hmm. you don't you don't do all of that and then have another 20 to 30 minute match that's what they need to get under control but the last one you know with uh claudio swinging jericho on top of the cage out you know that was that was all pretty good it all made sense with claudio uh getting the win before eddie could leading to Mm -hmm. what you know what they're currently going to through in ring of honor yeah 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 i i do i think uh i'd rather see that though blood and guts we'll see um anything else from dynamite you want to hit on that dark order thing was kind of weird it was very convoluted when they're explaining the rules i thought yeah i didn't really care for it yeah so I don't, um no I, I, Did I, I say think... dark order house of black yeah oh okay 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 uh I'm i don't at the, i'm it. at the house of black thing when they're talking about like their their house, the house rules, rules challenge and like fine. they're listing off all, i thought it was just kind of confusing as they're going through all the rules but I'm very interested in this, you know, Will Washington uh, yes, being yes. part of AW now is like to solidify, you know, the long-term continuity. Did I say that right? Continuity. Uh, yeah. Continuity. Thank you. Of these stories, because you I mean, look at house of black and kind of how much steam they've lost since winning the trios titles. And then you have like swerve who disappeared. We never got the swerve and uh, Keith Lee you know, mm-hmm. big blow off match. So hopefully they can streamline that kind of stuff where these yeah. guys won't get lost in the shuffle after being propped up. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I agree. Anything else? Uh, we do. We got We got to go to WWE. Yeah. We got it. We got to talk We're about this long. title. <laughs> We're already we running talk long. About this title. All right. 
because we yeah we've we've had a lot of conversations on text and in the group about this this new wwe world heavyweight title justin all right you are more of a fan of the belt than i am although you don't love the belt i i have i don't want to say warmed up i don't think it's as bad as when i first saw it and really bashed it on twitter but i still think it's pretty bad um it looked like they were going for the look of the old big gold crumb ryan wcw title belt. 100 what they're going for yeah kind of has the shape to it but like i think i put on twitter it looked like an eight-year-old was like trying to draw that and then just got frustrated and just scribbled a big wwe logo in the middle <laughs> um there was this thing on the bump was it, a couple days ago you posted in the facebook group you sent it to me where like they were explaining all the stuff in the belt and of course, like many of the WWE belts of the past, like the undisputed title, like uh, the big Eagle belt, it's got the reference to the McMahon family crest, which is like the three lions somewhere in the belt, which it was like, hard I, to I could, see. I could kind of see some legs and that was it. Yeah. Because it's not a particularly well designed, like it's all just uh-uh. kind of muddled. Yeah. They talked about the three lions being in there. I think there was something about a crown, there was a crown. They talked about an Eagle, which is kind of hard to make out. Um, they talked about all the diamonds in it. And then the, the three ropes around the, the right. title plates to signify the ropes of the ring. <laughs> this is so good. Jeff in the chat, the Lannister crest. <laughs> 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 that was good, Jeff. Yes. Um, I just don't, I don't like it. You know, like to me, just bring back the big gold. Uh, I'm more of a traditionalist though. I mean, I don't. I don't mind a newly designed title, but this is just not good to me. It's just not good. But the bigger problem, Mm -hmm. as you've been saying and pushing, and I agree with is the idea of having a second place world champion. Like so they call it the world heavyweight title, even though one of the belts Roman has says world heavyweight champion on it. They want to have a brand specific world champion because of this brand split again which we've talked about for freaking almost seven years on this podcast, that two world champions does not work. One is always inferior. You can't have Cody Rhodes win this title when he has made the story about beating Roman. I just, how do you take it seriously? And also Justin, like what's the point of building up a dominant world champion for three years only to be like, Oh, guess what? We have another world champion too. Like who the fuck cares about that? Everyone knows Roman's the man. This is just a, another secondary title, but you already have secondary titles, which they've done a pretty good job in building up. Yes. Those are your brand specific titles, the US and the IC title. That's all you need. You don't need another world champion. They already have traveling champions, Justin, the women's tag champions, so they can do it. Our, I mean, I guess we don't know how that officially is going to work now. Have they announced <sighs> since the draft? I guess that... they could create another women's tag team champion. That'd be you know? hilarious. That would but be hilarious. They, they got enough. Win- they got enough. Dire that contract, women's but... roster looks. Yeah. All right. You, you so, just go ahead. Rant. Okay. The best point you made is that <clears throat> you can't do this right now when you're in the midst of this almost thousand day run of a world champion who feels a hundred percent like the man on the roster. And you're Mm -hmm. just all of a sudden going to say, well, uh, he's not here every week. So (laughs) we're just going to make another title belt. If, if if it, we're just in in the middle of like a 250 day run and they want to make a big deal out of the draft and how, you know, it's actually going to be earth shattering or whatever the hell triple H said, you know, if it's going to be an actual brand split, I get it that you want to do. I, I hate it, but I get it. But to do this now, after missing out on two amazing opportunities <laughs> to cement a baby face by beating Roman Reigns, it, it, it like you said, it just feels like a secondary world title. And you look at the people on the roster and I don't see anybody on that raw roster except for maybe Gunter who can make it feel like a big deal Mm -hmm. real quick. I have to go back to the, the design. I don't know if it's the lighting, but to your point, you can't make out anything on this belt when they, when they put up the graphic of like the replica you can buy online, it looks like a completely different belt. 
the, the entire <laughs> middle of it is supposed to be like silver, but it just looks like a giant black smudge. Yeah. It, it's just, it's not good. Like I, I don't hate it only because I hate the fact that it exists so much more mm-hmm. than the belt itself. But yeah, to your point, it, it, this would be a travesty if this <laughs> ends up on Cody. Yeah. That would be so bad. And, and then you'll have all those marks and tribalists saying, oh, this is what they're doing. Finish the story. Well, the story is Finish that he, want, story. <laughs> he wanted to win the title that his dad never did. Yes. Not, not, not a the title, title created out of thin air. Yeah. yeah. Um, My assumption is, and this kind of goes to the draft too, because the, the two guys I thought were the biggest possibilities of dethroning Roman are both on raw, which yeah, here Ryan just brought up the picture, the graphic uh, that they show online, which doesn't look like, you know, what it actually looks like in person at all. That's the other thing. When you see it, you know, on TV, you can't make out the world champion at all. No. Now, hopefully they can fix some of this stuff because I hated the current IC title when it first debuted, because I, I thought it had the same problems where I couldn't really make it out under the TV lights um, for whatever reason, if maybe I'm just more used to it. I, I thought it has looked better recently. That could also just be because I'm a big Gunter fan. Uh, yeah. I mean, it doesn't look that bad in that picture, right? It's, I mean, it's like, not great. I feel like the designs around the outside is just like, it all blends together. So I can kind of see there's like a lion on the one side over here. Mm -hmm. There's one here. And then there's one at the bottom, but you can't make it out in person at all. There's a little Eagle at the top, but like, if you just a little guy, but if you compare this with like the old crumb Ryan title that flair had just the intricacies of that title belt, let me see if I can find a good picture of it. Some of these are replicas. They're not like the original, but like, that's a it's a dual plated belt so like on that one this is a replica but you know you can kind of see like the background silver and then you got the gold plating and Mm -hmm. so it the stuff stands out more this wwe belt is just like all this new wwe belt is just all gold and it just like blends together there's too much going on for it to stand out at all i just i just remembered why i don't absolutely hate this design is because I do think it's superior to the actual world title belts. They have, yeah. they have three world title belts right now. Ryan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't like those belts either. Just a big logo. Three world championships in WWE right now. It's I, unbelievable. I, I get that. It's, I get why they're doing it. A couple of things you said I want to hit on here. Okay. Uh, r- I, real quick. I yeah, just finished my thought. Uh, Cause I was talking about how, I thought the two guys would be Cody or Seth were the ones Mm -hmm. that I thought sometime in the next year would be the one to beat Roman. And now they're both on raw. So things are either they've got another plan or things are going to get convoluted. Maybe down the road, one of them wins Royal rumble. I I just, did you see the rumor that supposedly WWE has plans to keep the titles on Roman until September of 24 so that he can beat Hogan's record? I did see that that's when it would, how long he'd have to have it to beat the, the whole fucking Because they want to rewrite the record books. Yeah. Could you fucking imagine? Just Roman, uh, yeah, that SmackDown it's, roster, I, I I don't see jack shit for, for him to go up against for yeah. anything more than like three months. And they're going to be in dire straits. It's just something for them to say on commentary once in a while. And it's so dumb because it doesn't matter. Nobody cares. Like, He's had the title belt for three years. Okay. Like, do we really have to beat this Hogan number in the grand scheme of things? He's never, he's gone so much, you know, like it doesn't, it just doesn't matter. I think, I hope that doesn't happen, Justin. (laughs) So I, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to rant here and I keep sidetracking myself. So to make my final point, they still have to go with Cody to dethrone Roman, in my opinion. So that means I I think Seth is going to end up with this title just to appease him. Um, I agree. And, and then we'll be pro- my pick. We'll, we'll probably get, I'm assuming Seth and Cody at night of champions to keep building this quote unquote story of Cody, not being able to win the big one. I interrupted you, please. Um, the floor is yours. 
so I get I get why they're doing it. If you really want to have a hard brand split and you want the world champions, if I wouldn't do it, I understand the mindset because they've done it in the past. But as you said, they had two times to do something with an up and coming baby face. Neither guy right now is close to as hot as they were, Sammy or Cody. That was our big fear about Cody going to Mania. Boy, if they don't actually put the title on him, can he actually carry his momentum? He does not feel as big right now at all. Does he still feel like a main eventer? Yes, absolutely. But he doesn't have that momentum he had before. It did cool him off to lose. And when you have those two opportunities, if you knew they were going to do this, okay, this is Hunter's wheelhouse. Okay, creative. If you know you're going to split the rosters, then split the titles. You already have two title belts. (laughs) Have Roman lose one of them, for fuck's sake. Do you really need (laughs) to create a third title belt? It's so dumb. You already have a title named World Heavyweight Champion. Now we're just going to create another word. It literally freaking says it on the belt. The black leather belt says World Heavyweight Champion. Uh, Oh, by the way, we've created a new belt called the World Heavyweight Championship. Hmm, I could have swore that that other belt already says that. What is going on here? And, you know, it's always, we've said this on the show before too, it's very confusing for someone getting into wrestling to be like, oh yeah, you know, by the way, they have two world champions. What? What do you mean they have two world? No, but really, who's the guy? Oh, they have two world champions. No, but who's the, who's the guy? There's, that's always the conversation. There's a, One will always mm-hmm. outrank the other one. So I get why they're doing it, but they had prime opportunities to split the belts and keep one of those guys white hot. They didn't do it. Here we are. They've cooled off a bit. Now we're just going to create a new title. Last thing about the belt designs. You were talking about, you know, we don't like this one that much. We really don't like the big logo world title belts they've had for the last few years. Um, they haven't had a good world title belt since the undisputed belt in the early 2000s. That was the last really good one they had. Agree. Hated the spinner belt. It just yep. looked way too is unique. Yes, tacky. Didn't like it. Um, I know they do this for toys. They change yep. the designs. They want to sell merch. But if you want to build prestige, for God's sake, this whole story about Roman Reigns is about prestige and rewriting the record books. Why would you not just keep the same belt through the years? Does the NFL change the Super Bowl trophy? Does the Stanley Cup change? Does the Larry O'Brien trophy change in the NBA? It's the same trophy through the years, right? So they should have never left the winged eagle. That should still be the belt today. It should. It just should. And if you're going to have another title belt, bring back the crumb Ryan, the old WCW NWA belt, you know, and that's that. I, I don't want to sound like an old fart, but like, my God, they're still the best title belts ever made. And you know, all these other sports leagues, they keep the same designs. Sometimes they change like the conference titles. Yes. And like Mm -hmm. the MVP trophies and stuff, but the main, the main trophy stays the same and everyone knows what it is. And like everyone always longs for those, those old belts for a reason. They're the best ones. The Reggie Park winged Eagle is the best belt of all time. That's when Roman won the winner takes all match at WrestleMania last year. Yes. They they should have just done some like they they'll never just go back and bring the winged eagle back. What they need is some amalgamation of like the best qualities of all their titles. And it feels like they were kind of trying to do that with this, but it just got mm-hmm. way too convoluted. It's like yep. trying to do too much was the problem. Yep. Like all right, it's shaped like the crumb Ryan but it has an eagle on it, but it has the McMahon family crest like the big eagle had. I mean, just it's too much. (laughs) They overdid it, I think. Maybe it'll grow on me, but right now, I just I still don't care for it that much. It is really weird, though. Maybe this should be one of our last points here before we maybe get into some questions. The fact that they won't just do floating world champions is so weird with the men, women, and the tags. Mm -hmm. it it just boggles my mind why they won't do that yeah because i mean we know i know we had a lot of questions about you know is do you have any excitement coming out of the draft you know Mm. are are there any potential feuds you see that could excite you no no (laughs) no because 
how, I mean, what, what would you set the over under at before they just start mixing again, before they have one bad rating and they're like, well, we need to get Roman on raw. That, that was a real bad rating last week. I mean, I'm, I'm sure they probably have something or they probably said something where, well, the, it doesn't start until after backlash because I mean, they already are promoting Cody on SmackDown this Friday. That's how much al- this draft mattered. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I will almost guarantee you that in the lead into SummerSlam, there will be people crossing. And that's August. what makes it meaningless. I mean, yeah. you know, I they I think they tricked me once or twice, but not anymore. I, I'm so fucking over the draft. It's so dumb having the two pools thing. That doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You have free agents, which I, I guess they kind of made some sort of argument for Brock Lesnar, but you all of a sudden have guys who are in NXT are now free agents. What? <laughs> you know what, what else I didn't? You know what else I didn't like? And sometimes I see these takes and I'm like, these people like just start watching wrestling in the last three or four years because <laughs> Justin, I saw people clamoring for brand specific pay-per-views. On Twitter, like, oh, oh no. yeah, let's bring back. Yeah, I think they're going to do the brand specific pay per view. I know this is in the discussions right now. Like, oh, that would be great. That'll really strengthen the brands. But no, I lived through brand specific yeah. pay per views. It sucks. I do not want that. It's a weaker pay per view. You got these long shows. You can blend the brands, give me a better card. The brand split in general just sucks. I want to see a show with all the talent on it. I don't want well, to see it split across. In theory, it's like you make new stars, but in the past, it has never worked. It just has not worked in this company. The problem is, is that there were kids who grew up in that era, and now they're not kids with social media accounts. The The number of people that I somebody posted a question on Twitter was, if you had control of WWE, what's the first thing you you, you would do? And this was months ago. Mm-hmm. The number of people who said split the titles would make you sick. Oh. I mean, that's what they grew up with. That is what they're used to. That is mm-hmm. the wrestling that gives them no those nostalgia feelings. Their nostalgia, yeah. Even if it wasn't a good era, like historically speaking by most measures. Yeah. Yikes. I saw the clamoring for that and I was just like, time to log out of Twitter. Take me to Blue Sky. i'm done with this um real quickly so we do have backlash this saturday night by the way if you guys forgot san juan puerto rico i know justin you said you didn't want to give picks i'll just run through my picks really quick okay and oh (laughs) by the way i want to keep ranting here this whole idea about building prestige in your titles and roman's got to beat hogan's record and all this stuff yes 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 I think you know where I'm going with this. Yep. Well, they made this big idea out of how long Bianca Belair has had the Raw Women's title. And what's about to happen, Justin Joint? Uh, here you go. This is yours now. Can I this have your trade oh, belt? So that record's just out the window. I guess that doesn't matter. What? <laughs> what? Uh, it's so dumb. And, and, <sighs> and, you know, for weeks, watching Raw and SmackDown, I was like, you we get these tag teams in these groups together and they're talking about this could be the last time we see all them together and then they're all just being drafted together <laughs> even not just tag teams but groups and then it's weird because you see ray rip or you know lwo gets all drafted to smackdown mm-hmm. okay and then you have ray ripley get drafted and, and then an hour later judgment day gets drafted it's like, <laughs> What are we doing here? Amazing. None of this shit just makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So so Ripley and Bel Air will just be swapping titles, I assume, then. And oh, man. You know, the card still lists Bianca defending the Raw women's title, even though she's going to SmackDown. Gets EO Sky. Um, I'll pick Bianca there. We've got Ripley defending what's still it's still listed as the SmackDown women's title match. Uh, I get Zelina Vega. I'll pick Ripley there pretty confidently. <laughs> um, Bad Bunny and Damian Priest. I mean, obviously, with the Puerto Rico thing, um, I got to go with Bad Bunny here. Uh, we've got U.S. title 
Theory defending against Bobby Lashley and Bronson Reed. A wolf. <sighs> Looking at seeing as how I don't think either women's title is going to change. I don't know what the hell. I'll pick Bobby Lashley to win the the U.S. title here. Give the fans a title change, but boy, I'm not. I wouldn't be confident in that. Got Rollins against Omas. Better be Rollins winning that match. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uh, Riddle, Owens, and Zayn against the Bloodline. Uh, I'm going to pick Riddle, Owens, and Zayn. Problems so, in, in the Bloodline, perhaps. Drafted to different brands, so we're never going to get a Sammy versus Jay blow-off match. Yeah. Well, until they, they start mixing thank, in a couple of months. Thanks, brand split. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah again, exactly. Another reason it's terrible. And Cody and Brock. I mean, boy, it should be Cody. <laughs> I mean, you know, he yeah. lost to Roman. He got treated like the little brother on Raw the next night. It should be Cody, for God's sakes. Uh, I'll pick Cody, I guess, because that would make the most sense. Uh, not to put you on the spot, but did they ever explain why Brock all of a sudden turned on Cody? Like, kind of defending Roman Reigns in some roundabout way, the guy that he's basically been feuding with since Man. WrestleMania 31. Not, not to my knowledge. I mean, I might have. <laughs> I don't. I don't watch every WWE show. Not yeah, lie, that's the same. Results, I, but that's why I assume there's got to be some reason. I just, yeah. I, I haven't seen it, and I haven't heard it, and I haven't mm -hmm. read it. Yeah, no. Which, which to says to me that it's shitty. Yeah. So that is the lay of the land, Justin. Um, any other thoughts before we go to a brief question and answer segment from the listeners? These are always fun. I'm good. I want to be happy for a little All bit. Right. So let's go to the questions. It was fun though. Ranting a little bit. feels It good was a little fun. It, it really does. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, get in our Facebook group, you guys top rope nation pro pro wrestling discussion. I put up a thread today saying we were going to do a Q and a at the end. It's been a while. Like to do these every once in a while. So um let's see well i think we've just answered this one from our guy kyle ryan he said draft re recap question <laughs> what will be the biggest feuds going forward who are you most looking forward to seeing on a new brand and any call-ups you think will be interesting well i don't know the, the answer it, kyle yeah the answer is that it doesn't really matter at least it won't in six months <laughs> here's a fun one niall clark said after the recent theme song tournament on our facebook page mm. which was won by steve austin we talked about this on the classic show, by the way, if you guys want to hear us discuss this with Jesse. Um, the finals of that tournament was Austin's theme beating Real American. Okay. David Jenkinson, by the way, big shout out. Thanks for running the yes, tournament. Yes, thank you so much, dude. So he, Niall's asking, what are our top three entrance themes of all time in pro wrestling? Your top three. I don't know if you've been thinking about this since he posted this earlier today, Justin. I Did have. you have an answer? Well... Number one, I, I want to say that I, I think original entrance songs and uh, stuff taken outside of professional wrestling should be weighted difference, weighted differently. That was kind of part part of my problem with with mm -hmm. the, the tournament, because like I mean, cult of personality is, I mean, a fantastic entrance song for punk, but but it was like a a hit before that and it's just a plain and simple perfect song and then you'd compare that to like break the walls down mm -hmm. which is so ingrained to jericho and like compared to other wrestling just strictly wrestling songs is pretty terrific yeah. when most of them are crap so uh like non-original I, I i would go cult of personality pomp and circumstance and serious i think are the kind of the unassailable top three yeah that's hard to disagree i think like enter sandman would be in the mix i mean his entrance oh, is pretty cool yeah yeah um but boy that's pretty hard to, those three that's pretty top tier for real songs i agree and then um, on the flip side yeah. I, I i would go i'd probably go uh Break the walls down. Um, you know, it's weird because for some of them are like wrestlers I don't really like now mm -hmm. or maybe really ever. Like 
I always loved Goldberg's. And, you know, that's part of the key of these entrance songs is, is are they a good entrance song? And how well, you know, are, are they fixed into the wrestler themselves? Yeah. Because that song always worked perfect with Goldberg. And then, like, I, I, I always liked Bray Wyatt's. I thought it was always fantastic. Mm. Mm-hmm. The Wyatt family one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Boy, I'd have to go probably Real American. I think is the best. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Time. Yes, that that is number one. It, but yeah. a lot of that could be nostalgia. Or at least I want to claim it's nostalgia because he's kind of a piece of shit human being. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A real Rick Derringer, real musician doing the song. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'd I'd have to go Real American. I'd I'd probably go Brett's second WWF song with the the squealing guitars and the solos in it, not the original Heart Foundation one, but the second Some- one he used for this most of the singles run. Ryan, I need you to be honest. Some of that mm-hmm. is your fandom, right? Like if that's if that was on somebody else, I don't think you'd be saying that. It's hard to separate because that's like, true. That's true. That was, I guess I that was my point with so Goldberg. much as a Brett fan, but I think it is pretty revered just as a entrance song. And even like, did you see the rival show about Brett and Austin recently on A&E? Mm-mm. Recapping their feud. It's pretty good. And like Austin makes a reference to it in there about how when you hear that guitar shred at the beginning it gives you goosebumps true yeah i agree um i think sexy boys in there great theme song sean um and then i'd also have in my mix maybe the nwo song uh demolition yeah demolition was a great theme Um, i mean another garbage human being but warriors was iconic yeah 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 break the walls down I've never told you this. I'll just tell everyone about it right now. Sometimes my kids, they want to wrestle daddy. And what I do is on the Alexa, I turn on the ultimate warriors theme and I start running around the house like a madman, like pumping my fist, like he would do in his entrance. And they laugh so hard. That's like my routine. Yeah. That's a great one. God, I got uh, that one. In well, uh, you know, along the same lines, and, and this isn't sometimes this is almost every night. Now I me, me and my son have to wrestle. And he has yep. to come out to Finn Balor's music. Ooh, yeah. Like he'll go down the hallway. I'll put the music on and he does the whole shebang. Cena's is kind of in the mix too. No, it's iconic. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. I, how about for more modern ones? Cause I was thinking like Nakamura and I really love mm-hmm. Roman Reigns's. I think is really good. Yep. Uh, I like Roman's current theme a lot. Um, I mean, Judas, that's a real song, but he's the wrestler, so it kind of. Yeah. I'm just kind of so over that one. Yeah, it's it's pretty good though. I mean, solid theme. So uh, with, I like I like Kenny's quite a bit. Omegas. Okay, that, that was going to be my question: mm. is like, what would be your picks for AEW? Oh yeah, um, probably Omega. I actually like the Bucks quite a bit. I haven't heard it in a while because they've been doing Wayward Son. Jeff Jeff Browning calling out Orange Cassidy's Jane is fantastic. Yeah, true. I like that for a real song. Uh, I love Hangman's. It's simple, but really good. Yeah. Yeah. Fits perfectly with him. Mm-hmm. I'd say like outside of Judas and um, because it's a real song and like Cult of Personality, another real song. Kenny's might be my favorite. Battle Cry, I think. But yeah, that's a good question. I love these themes. I listen yeah, to a lot of wrestling here. themes personally in my free time sometimes. So, I mean, I did that as a kid. But do you remember like back in the day? I remember when I first got Napster downloading mm-hmm. wrestling theme songs. They would take hours. Oh, yeah. But I didn't have a CD burner. So I would take like my little boom box and a blank cassette tape. And I would set it right next to the computer speakers and then hit record. And that's how I would like save the theme song. So I could listen to them later. <laughs> that's what I did uh, outside of the computer room, at least. I mean, that is going way back in the day. That's how we did it. But now it's so easy with YouTube to get like the perfect quality themes all the time. And yeah, I, I still throw them on through like digital music services and stuff. So there's good ones out there today. Um, Yeah. Great question, Niall. Uh, anything else we want to go to that are there, cool? there, there's one non wrestling related one that I'm going to have to assist, insist upon that we answer. I don't even the know star if, Wars movie just because yeah, Jeff's that, here. Oh, I, I, well, not just not, not Jeff's only, here. I was going to actually throw that in yeah, when I saw it earlier. It's May the 4th. Yeah. 
At, and I, I, honest to God, I don't. Are you even a Star Wars fan? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. I haven't been able to get my kids to watch them really. Um, in fact, Justin, I pulled up, and this was before Episode Nine came out. But I, I knew I had done a tweet where I ranked all the Star Wars movies and I tagged you in it like years ago. And I actually looked That's it up for right. reference. That's this is from right. 2018. Um, and I think well, my okay. overall list is well, hold on. pretty similar. I, I, don't, still. I don't think we put the question out there yet for the listeners. Yeah, so the, the question is from Jeff in the Facebook group, non-wrestling, best Star Wars movie. So I'm not going to go through my whole ranking then, but I'll tell you what I think is the best. Empire Strikes Back. Yep. I think that's the right answer. Yeah. Uh, growing up as a kid, when I think you need a little bit more finality to things, I would have said Re- Return of the Jedi. But mm-hmm. Empire's the best movie for me, followed by, it's probably going to upset some people, Last Jedi. I fucking love The Last Jedi. I think it's amazing. I had Last Jedi as my number three on my list. Nice. Yeah, I had A New Hope as number two. Um, and then I had Last Jedi as my th- number three. Yeah, you know, you know what the biggest thing for me as a Star Wars fan that has changed since like seeing the movies to now mm-hmm. is when the prequel trilogy came out, and uh, the Phantom Menace, which I was there for opening night, super excited. I think I went and saw that seven times. You know, having grown up, now I see it's maybe not all that great of a movie. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Attack of the Clones. And then Revenge of the Sith came out and it was like, man, and and, 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 man, and and, and, like, this is fucking metal seeing Anakin turn to the dark side. Fucking love it. This is (laughs) rad. And then you get a little bit older and then you have kids. And then you see the scene where it's implied that he massacres a room filled of young children. And it's like. I'm never fucking rooting for this dude again. I don't give a shit about his redemption. <laughs> it's true. That's definitely true. I'll just throw this on the video stream. This is January 7th, 2018. That's how I ranked one through eight before episode nine had come out in order. I think you could probably throw nine right there below one. That probably works. Yeah. I wasn't a big fan. <laughs> that movie's garbage. Yeah. So for you, not on the video stream in order, I had episodes five, four, eight, Six seven three, two one, and yes, then I would probably add nine there at the bottom, personally. But I did have eight number three overall. So yeah, uh, I like and, Star and, Wars. I just haven't been able to get my kids into it. I'd like to rewatch them all again right now. Um, I did rewatch them all around this time with my wife, who hadn't seen them, <laughs> and that's what they were all fresh in my mind when I did this list. But trying to get my kids into it, they're just kind of freaked out by Darth Vader right now, still. So mm-hmm. yeah, uh, going outside of the main story. I, I would rogue one would rank very highly for me. Yes. And honestly, I really liked the Han Solo movie. I thought that was pretty good. Yeah. yeah no, I, know, I, I know it got shit on and I would love to see the Lord and Miller version, but uh, I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. Yeah, man. We're going to have to call on a lot of these questions in the future. Let's let's uh, next week plan on doing another Q and a and getting to some of the rest of these. Cause there's some really good questions here. We're just not okay. going to, we're not planning on like a two hour podcast tonight. So <laughs> we're, we've already run almost 90 minutes, which was longer than I thought we would. But yeah, I mean, good questions. And if you want us to answer more next week or get your question in the running, just refer to this thread in the Top Rope Nation Facebook group. <laughs> Did you see my response to Jesse on the NBA question? No, I missed it. Jesse said, is there a current NBA player you'd be interested in seeing wrestle? And my response was, yeah, Grayson Allen, just so I can watch him get his ass kicked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, I, I Can I make one more Star Wars point? Because I, I, I'm so Do relieved it. to see Jeff Browning's uh, quote that Last Jedi is great. Because I just remember yes. seeing that movie and then hearing all the backlash afterwards and even I talked to my cousin on the phone. My cousin was like, oh, I thought it was kind of stupid. Like, why are those bombs dropping on those ships in the middle of space? Like, there's no gravity out there. It's like, buddy, there was bombs dropping in Empire, which is considered the best Star Wars movie. They were <laughs> dropping them on that fucking meteorites. Come on now. Let's not just look for dumb reasons to hate a movie. 
if you can travel through the galaxies, don't you think they figured out how to make the bombs drop? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Not that big of a leap. Yeah. yeah. So anywho, I just had to get that out. <laughs> Good a little sidetrack away from pro wrestling. I like doing that once in a while. On the yeah. Show. And why not? It's our show. We can do that. You don't like exactly. it? You can just skip the, the end of the podcast here, but <laughs> but don't yeah, keep <laughs> but keep the questions coming you guys appreciate it love the interaction with the listeners um as always by the way um i do have to say one of the deals for joining the patreon group is you get a free top rope nation sticker in the mail and i had run out of stickers we've had a lot of people join in the last few months that are owed stickers so i don't want to forget any of you if you're on the patreon p- page and you haven't got the trn sticker drop me a message on in there so i don't forget to send it to you um, because I just ordered 50 more a couple of days ago. They should be here in a couple of days. They're the, they're the high quality, like die cut stickers with the logo. And so I am going to be sending those out very soon, but DM me on, on Patreon to let me know if you haven't got one yet. So I can make sure to get you a sticker if you're a patron. And if you're not a patron, sign up. What do you got, Justin? I totally forgot. Uh, he sent this to me a couple of weeks ago. I have oh, not the de- figures. We have not decided what we're going to do with these yet. Uh, he is a, a toy collector and trader. Uh, one of my dearest and beloved friends, John, love you. Uh, he came across a bunch of these tiny little, like micro figures that he nice. sent to me. Uh, he just said, I- I'm just contributing these to Top Rope Nation. I will let you and Ryan decide what you're going to do with them. Uh, if we can maybe. If there's any interest, we could come up with some sort of giveaway. Uh, if nobody's interested, I'll fucking keep them and give them to my kid. But like <laughs> right here, I got a little a little CM Punk. Yeah. Uh, but there are a ton of them. And some of them we might need help identifying. But uh, <laughs> I just thought that might be a little fun little thing for us to do. Let us know if you have ideas for a giveaway game or something in the facebook group because we definitely want to do this we love giving back to the listeners and appreciate your buddy sending those to you that's awesome yeah yeah we're, you're gonna have to come over and help me identify some of these yeah. i got a lot of wrestling figures behind me you guys if you're not watching the video feed but that was another question we had in the group is all-time favorite wrestling figures and i i would have to think about that um pretty hard but i love the, the hasbro line if you can't tell it was my all-time favorite line, so it's probably some of those. Okay, hey, real quick, this was one that he showed me. You might not be able to see it very well, but who do you think that is? I cannot figure it out for the life of me. Hmm. There's nothing on the back. At first, when I saw the tights, I thought it was going to be Jericho, but that's you not... know what? I think you might be right. It might is be it short when hair. He had short I, hair? I, yeah, I think it's short hair Jericho. Okay. Yeah, I think it is actually. Hmm. So, a lot of good stuff in here. Yeah, we're gonna have some, we're gonna be running some giveaways, you guys. Stay tuned. Thank you, Johnny. Uh, yes, Justin, this was a uh, it's a great time, man. It's been too long. Sickness sucked. Last week was fun with the with the Patreon show, obviously, but mm-hmm. a lot of you haven't heard that if you're not patrons. Uh, but yeah, always fun to do another flagship show and and talk a lot of pro wrestling we had a lot on the agenda tonight we will be back probably early next week justin we'll have to talk about this but i think the schedule next week might shift a little bit okay we'll see we'll see but we will be back next week at some point in time appreciate all of you tuning in whether you are listening to the audio feed or watching the video or maybe both just so you can see what we're holding up on the stream as long as we're not recording sunday night because that is officially succession night in this household Yes, and I am one episode behind. I've almost oh, caught up. Man. Oh man! So I will probably be watching that Sunday night as well. Oh, um, yeah. Backlash? I don't know. Are we going to review Backlash? I guess we'll have to talk about that. Probably should. Yeah. I, it will not be that night. I will tell you guys that because I got a really busy weekend with dance recitals with my daughters. So we will get to it. We'll review it for you all as only Top Rope Nation can. So look for it early next week. That, that will actually probably be next week's broadcast. So that'll be on the agenda. We got a post up in the Patreon group for the $10 plus second tier patrons. Not second tier. That makes it sound bad. What, what do I call that? The main <laughs> event tier? The main event tier. 
uh, which is one above the $5 intro tier. Uh, if you're in the main event tier, you get to nominate shows for Top Rope Nation Classics. Lots of nominations coming in for May. We'll have the vote going up for that very soon. Uh, and I'll probably be watching that next weekend if we get the vote in by then. So Top Rope Nation Classics for May coming up. Stay tuned. Justin, you examining another figure? Yeah, another one. I can't Thoughts. I can't make it out who it is. There's like a almost looks like there's a CZ on the side. Is that Zack Ryder? Let me see the face. Oh no. Is that Edge? No, I don't think it's Edge. He's got something on the You know what? I think you're right. I think it's Zack Ryder. Oh, like when he had the long hair still? Yeah. Hmm. Anywho, there you go. Sorry. There you go. <laughs> all right, everybody. We're going to take off for the night. We hope you all have a great weekend. We'll be talking to you again in a few weeks. Stay tuned. Thank you for your support. We'll catch you all next time. Take care. Peace.